Hi everyone, this will be a bowl demonstration similar to the cylinder. So for tools, what you're going to need a uh, basic set, small sponge, wire tool, needle tool, and your wood knife. Right? So how I like uh, my wire tool to rest is I'll straighten it out and just put it at the length of the table space on each wheel. Um, I find it keeps it out of the way a little bit of everything and then I can place my tools off to the right side. So we've gone through centering um, gone through wedging, right? So these will be a little bit less in depth. A couple of things to remember with uh, the wheel when you sit down, uh, disinfect, right? So grab a wipe or grab the spray when you first sit down, spray your wheel or wipe it with the disinfecting wipes from the bucket okay uh, since other people are using the wheel they may have a different direction that they throw so keep that in mind so turn on your wheel and make sure the direction is going that you're comfortable if not you know stop the pedal reverse directions okay um, If you're right-handed, I'm right-handed, um, this is counterclockwise, right? I always throw counterclockwise. Uh, lefties, yeah, go clockwise, center with your right. I know it's a little counterintuitive, um, but I think everyone's doing really well in finding the direction that works for them. So, beginning throwing. Centering. <clears throat> now after you get the hang of centering with your, with both hands, with compressing like this, that's all I did is compress with my hands on both sides and brought up into a cone, um, you may begin to favor a hand, right? So, um, like I center with my left and I compress down with my right hand. Um, so it's a bit of a dance. So going back and forth between adding pressure with my left hand and then compressing with my right. So you can see what's happening. Adding pressure with my left. This is constant, even pressure. And then compressing with my right. And again, this aligns all the clay together so it's a little bit more workable. Until I get it to that mound that I want for opening. Okay? So centering, I taught you all opening with both thumbs. Let me show you the way I do it. I open uh, with my left thumb, constant pressure, right, constant even pressure, that's what we're aiming for. And I've had a couple 
questions of how to judge the thickness of the bottom of the clay. So using your needle tool, um, spearing the base and then using your thumb as a measuring tool. Right? So I, won't, I don't want to go any deeper than that. After a while, you'll begin to feel out uh, you know, the depth of the clay just from having your hands on the wheel and you know, being able to gauge um, the depth of your base, the thickness of it. Right? So from here, I'll open. Um, and using my left thumb, I'll support with my right so I don't tweak my thumb too much. Um, and I use my thumb as a tool and I pull towards my center. With the thumbs, you're pulling outward. Um, with one thumb, I'm pulling in towards center. So try this uh, if you know, this might work for you better. Um, other people will open with their fingers and then pull in towards their center, right? I'll demonstrate that on the uh, next bowl. So when I pull out, remember I want the walls to just come outward uh, to the base of the clay where I had it centered. I have this nice little ridge going here. Um, so this is the basis for uh, a cylinder or a bowl. This is going to be a bowl. So, you know, bowls are like this. Cylinders uh, are like this for uh, pressure, right? So with throwing a bowl, I'll have more pressure directed from the inside out. For cylinders, I'll have more pressure directed from the outside going inward. Okay. So on this first pull, squeezing the clay between my fingers, adding water when you need. And I'll pinch that clay together. And instead of going upward, I want to direct that pressure outward. Bowls happen naturally with the wheel because you have this centripetal force moving the clay and uh, it wants to uh, move outward because of the motion of the wheel, right? It's um, the circular motion of the wheel wants to push the clay outward. And if you use more water, you'll find that uh, it will move outward on you as your clay body becomes saturated with water and more soft. <coughs> So adding water, how I pick up the water from my bucket is I'll grasp, um, you know, I'll cut my hand just slightly with my fingertips and drip where I need. It should feel pretty slick, right? If it feels sticky, then you're not using enough water um, and your splash pan shouldn't be a swimming hole. Okay. If your splash pan is a swimming hole, you've either been throwing all day or you've been using too much water. And then again, I want to do another pull. So adding that pressure on the outside, see if I can get my fingers over here so you can see. And then pinch that clay.
bring it up and out. So as you're working with bowls, if you're adding water, they'll be prone to slumping over, and we don't want to do that. So uh, less, the less you work it, the better, right? Um, so with my sponge, I'm going to smooth out that base take up the slip and then if there's any little ridges or anything like that I can compress them down with my sponge and have a nice even base okay so from here um, you can do a number of things if you like your shape you're ready to cut the clay off of your base. Man down. We're all good. So from here using my wood knife blade towards me. I just want to remove that excess clay that I cut. And bowls can be kind of tricky to cut the excess clay off because you have so much of it uh, moving outward. So you have like this you know, awning, this umbrella of clay that you have to uh, get under awkwardly, right? So from here, you could take your wood knife and shape things up a little bit. I'm supporting with my inside hand just to help compression. That's pretty good. So from here, if you like the shape of your bowl, you can cut it off and put it on your board, um, or you can shape it, right? So you can see the profile of this, it's a little bit more um, like a V than I want. I want it to be a nice bowl shape. So we'll shape from the inside out, uh, and your sponge is a great tool for that. So with this curved uh, side here, I'll press down and in slightly of the wall and just let that take the shape of the sponge. If I want to push the uh, shape a little bit more, I'll move top to down. Okay. And you can see I have a little bit of a wobble going on with the bowl. That's totally fine. You know, things don't have to be perfect, right? I know we'll all we all want that lovely, perfectly centered bowl, you know, without maybe a dent or something like that, but um, yeah. dents give character. Uh, I love throwing asymmetrically. There's a whole philosophy about throwing asymmetrically, you know, things in life aren't perfect, so why should our pottery be perfect that we throw, okay? <clears throat> so you can really use this sponge to shape up the side, smooth out the surface, 
take off all that excess clay. Uh, so play around with this. And this sponge has a lovely give to it. So if you noticed me earlier taking my sponge and lightly touching the rim, it smooths it out really nicely um, so there's no sharp edges. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Um, you know, I have a little dent right here where I went to cut the clay. Um, and that's fine, I'm not worried about that. Um, this is a great bowl for trimming, right? Now, to remove this, remember using the wire like dental floss wrapping around your fingers and then placing your thumbs on the wheel and then cutting from back to front. So bowls come off fairly easily um, because they're so wide, which is why you cut that excess clay off at the base. So I lift up one side, I can lift up the other side, and we're ready to go. Okay? Um, and you might see your bowl taco a little bit, like when you pick it up, it may shift in form. Clay has a memory, so what I'm going to do is when I put it on my board, Here's my board of stuff. How can we get this so you can see it? There we go. Balance it awkwardly right there. So in reshaping this, it went oblong, right? I just go on the side that has the link that is squished together. I just lightly press up. And I want to go back and hold that shape. Okay. We'll have another um, way of taking things off the wheel with uh, soaking it with water, which I will demonstrate on this bowl. Okay. So cleaning off the wheel. Right. Put it down with purpose, give it a little smack so it doesn't want to go anywhere, and then seal the base. Grabbing water that I need, pressing in with my left hand, compressing with my right on top. And then going back and forth. Between coning up and compressing down. holding in place, pressure on top, pressure on the side, gently releasing, opening. The last time I demonstrated with my thumb, let's demonstrate with fingers, okay? So I'm right-handed, I use my right fingers for that because I have more control. So opening with my fingers. Don't forget to use clay, or use clay. Don't forget to use water. That will help you open the clay on center. And then from here, if you're using your fingers, I'll always support um, your fingers are useful tools 
it's important to support them. Um, they might feel a little achy or, uh, you know, if you overuse them. Uh, my hands tend to get a little bit achy if I put too much stress on them. That's why I always support while I work with them. So pulling out like that. Then I'll go back and compress the base. Okay. And then pulling. Compressing that clay from the outside. Pinching the clay between my two fingers. And pulling up and out. I'll always have more pressure as I uh, first begin pulling. So when I start from the base, I'll have the most pressure applied to the clay, and as I move through, it begins to lighten. If I have the same amount of pressure uh, holding throughout the whole pulling process from the base to the rim, it'll tear the clay. Same goes for speed. I'll always have the wheel going uh, the fastest when I'm centering. And then as I begin my last pulls, I'll slow it down a little bit. So pinching that clay together, bringing the inside finger over the outside finger, Pulling up and out. That looks pretty good. So, another shaping tool that we have in the kit is uh, our ribs. So, this will be a quick demonstration of how to use your rib in shaping a bowl. So be careful with these. These are sharp, right? So if you, you know, are taking clay off of the rib after using it, this can cut you. So just be careful with it. Be aware of it. You know, you're not going to die from it, but it will be uncomfortable for a little while. So in shaping, I do like to take that clay off first. Because if I don't remove that clay at the base, it just becomes a little hard to get at. So, this is a really great shape for a bowl, um, and the idea behind using this tool is lightly pressing into the clay and just letting the clay wall take the shape of the bowl. And you can see how it's shaped the top, right? We're shaping from the inside out. And I want to continue that curve downward. I've got about uh, an inch of clay to shape on the base here. And so I will press downward until that edge reaches the base of the clay. And I got a lovely shape bowl.
Okay. So same thing goes with your wood rib. Right? Different curves, different edges. Um, you know, you can shape things differently with using, you know, the different edges of the ribs. Okay. And if you really want to be fancy, you can pull this rim out just a little bit. So using this rib, I'm supporting underneath with my finger like this. Okay. So this is kind of a typical potter's bowl, right? A little bit of a flared rim, nice and curved on the inside, and it'll make for a nice soup bowl or cereal bowl. And then again, finishing, finishing touch with a sponge. So it looks pretty good. So from here, um, I'm going to cut off the bowl. And let's say it's a little touchy in removing it. Like, it's just not working removing it the usual way that I showed you. Um, so in cutting it off the wheel head, I've created space between the base and the wheel head of clay. So cleaning off my wheel head, grabbing some water with my small sponge, and just soaking water uh, onto the wheel head. And from here, you can float that water underneath. And sometimes your wire will grab and pull your bowl with you, right? So you can see how easily this slides around. It's like a puck on an air hockey table, right? Um, the only thing that's really getting in our way now is a splash pan. So we can move the splash pan so you can get your hand underneath the base and can remove our wire tool. And again, you can see how the shape of this tacoed a little bit. So when I put it back on my board, just lightly press it back into shape. Right. There's the bowl. So send me any questions you guys may have about that and we'll see you on the next demonstration.